¿Qué tal amigos? Bienvenidos a los 49ers. Les saludamos Jesús Árate junto a Carlos Justice y como pueden ver hoy tenemos un gran invitado, el ala cerrada estrella de los San Francisco 49ers, George Kittle. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Goodness gracious, how are you guys today? Pretty good. Very happy to have you and uh, it's, it's always a pleasure. So George, uh, first congratulations for being named to the Pro Bowl. Thank your, you. Your fifth uh, Pro Bowl. So tell us a little bit about that and also how it feels to be on a team with nine Pro Bowlers. I'll start with that. The fact that we're on a team with nine Pro Bowlers, that's crazy. Um, you know, that's just, it shows how it is a team award. You know, when your team's playing well, when you're winning a lot of football games, a lot of guys have to play well. And so the fact that we had nine, five guys on offense, four guys on defense, all nominated, and we had like uh, 10 guys as being like the backups in the Pro Bowl, it's, it's a pretty special thing. And so very happy to be a part of a team with that. And all the guys, they deserve their flowers. They're probably, you know, a couple guys might have gotten a little snub, but you know, they're, they're breaking down the doors. At, you know, Ayuk will get in there at some point. Um, but for me personally, uh, it's an honor. You know, it's a goal of mine every single year is to, you know, 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns, Pro Bowl, all pro, those are my goals. Like, and then, And my number one goal is win. So then if those things happen and we're winning, I'm having a good year. Uh, you know, if those things all happen and we're not winning, I'm not nearly as happy. But um, you know, the fact that we're having a great football team and you know, got the Pro Bowl, it's fantastic. Um, you, were, you were mentioning that, that your mom actually voted quite a lot for that <laughs> so Pro Bowl. Many times. <laughs> but, it, but it's weird because you think about it and at the end of the day, As much as you want to have these flowers, you don't want to play that game. Oh, no, not at all. I don't want to go to Orlando at all. I'd much rather be in Las Vegas. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I think we have the team for it. Uh, we have the mindset for it. And the fact that, you know, we get the, the round one bye. So, you know, some of our vets can, you know, take some, a little time for their bodies to bounce back in the right way. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, Kyle Shanahan had mentioned that One of the things that he really liked about these pro bowlers is the fact that a lot of them were done in-house. Obviously, Trent came from outside, Christian came from outside, but a lot of you guys were rookies here that you've been building. And you're also thinking that what makes this, this team so special because you already play a Super Bowl. Yeah. You have been to multiple NFC championships, yes. and, and it's that mentality because you're so close to making it. Yeah, no, it is. Um, it, we've, we've played in a lot of big games, and you know we've won some big games, we've lost some big games, but Um, you know, we feel like we have the team and we've had the recipe of, you know, we think we're going to win those games. And so it's, it's nice to be a part of a team that, like I said, when you have nine pro bowlers, that means a lot of guys are playing at a really high level. And they played at a high level, whether it was a Sunday one o'clock kickoff or a Monday night football game, or, you know, it doesn't really matter. Our guys have showed up and played at a high level. So that's just kind of what we're expecting moving forward. Yeah, and this year with the first round bye week, You also got it in 2019, but in 2019, also coach uh, Kyle Shanahan was talking about it the other day. You guys had to wait basically until that last play with the green law tackle at the one yard line. So how, how is that this year? Like, what's your approach with more, more days basically to, to rest? Yeah, you know, it's, it's different because, you know, in 2019, we had to win that game to get the one seed. And this game, we didn't have to win it. So it's a, you know, you still want to go out there and play to, uh, you know, play. Because the only way to get better at football is to actually play it. And so... We had a lot of guys that played, you know, took a you know, significant amount of reps. You know, some guys played one series, some guys played two or three series. Most guys were out at halftime that, you know, we could rotate. Um, and so that is different because I think the 2019, it was a must win game. And so the following week, we kind of took it easy because, you know, it was, a, it was a big game and, you know, we had to protect each other. And then this week, it's like, well, we had a lot of guys not play very much. So let's get some good work in. And I'm, it's not like we're going to kill ourselves, but you want to go out there and, you know, stay crisp because we've, We've practiced at a high level. Our guys have rebounded at a high level, their bodies. And so you don't really just want to take a step back and like just sit on your couch, you know, all week. So Coach Shanahan, you know, we have a great plan. We're going to practice a couple times and you know, just make sure that we're still, you know, crisp and executing at a high level. When you look at that uh, and how you're preparing the, this game, how is that different from the, the previous playoffs in the past? Because again, the experience from you guys has, has changed drastically. And, and I feel like the hunger keeps getting better and then he gets getting bigger. You know, I think, uh, you know, our confidence is incredibly high. You know, we've, we've played a lot of big games. We've won a lot of big games, played a lot of good teams and won. Um, I would say yeah, it is, it's a little different, but at the same time, like I just try to always look at like every game's the same to me. Like the, the pressure will be higher, um, you know, the stakes more people watching, you know, you lose, you go home. So like there, you have that, but at the end of the day, you're still just playing a football game. And so you don't want to make anything up. You don't want to, like you might do a new thing a little bit, but like, you don't want to change anything up. We, we've been playing well. So let's just keep playing well, keep doing the things that we're really good at. And then we'll just let, you know, our tons of pro bowlers like handle business. 
and you know, Coach Shanahan's pretty good at coming up with plays. Right, and also now speaking a little bit about the running game and also specifically on the receivers, everybody blocking because uh, Christian McCaffrey was just talking about it the other day when they asked him about the Russian title, he, he winning the, the Russian title. And he said, really the running game is a testament to everybody. Obviously it starts with the offensive line, but the receivers, the tight ends. So can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, I would say like, you know, one of my favorite things is if you look at like an offensive, like someone's tape, the offensive line always pops up. You have to be physical in the offensive line, otherwise the D-line's gonna, you know, push you, throw you back and stuff like that. And you have to be physical as a tight end, you have to be physical as a fullback. But when it's your wide receivers that are blocking and digging out safeties who are blitzing, taking off guys off the edge, you can seal on the backside. When wide receivers like put their mind to it and put their mindset to it, it makes your whole team better. Cause that's the extra, like you see IU blocking 65 yard, yards down the field. You see JJ do it. You see our, our tight ends do it. You see Juice do it. And like, that's what allows Christian and our running backs to, hey, it's either gonna be a five yard gain or if you block that guy in the gap, he can squirt out the backside and it's 65 yards. And so when you have a team that is dedicated to that and likes the run game like we do, it's uh, really fun just to be a part of that. And I mean, a lot of it is, yes, it is a team award, but some of those, some of those runs that Christian had were Pretty, yeah, pretty amazing. Uh, and, and also, when you look at that, that, that comes from a part of, you had a thousand yards, Brandon has a thousand yards, Debo has a thousand yards from scrimmage. Um, how is this offense playing at, at so high level? What's, what's the key to that? I mean, you already mentioned about those blockings, right? That's, yeah. that's part of it. But to find that chemistry for you guys, to build it all together and be on a unit that has so many yards, everyone that yeah. has not done in history, what does that mean to you? Oh, it's, to be a part of an offense like that is incredible. And the way you do that is you stay on the field, you don't have any turnovers and you convert on third down because the more plays that you have per drive, the more opportunities you have as an offense. And then, you know, when you have a bunch of three and outs, there's just not a lot of opportunities for the ball to go around. Um, and so when we're, you know, our offense stays on the field, we're converting on third down. That's when you see, hey, I get the ball. Then the next time Christian gets the ball, then Ayuk runs downfield and then Debo scores the end. And it's just like, it's really fun when you have these long drives and you just, oh my gosh, who's gonna get the ball? I have no idea. It doesn't really bother me. Whoever gets the ball, I know that they might score. And so just to be a part of that offense and I mean, to be a part of NFL history with, you know, the first time that's ever happened before, it's a very cool honor. And, um, you know, we all got, we got footballs, we each signed them for each other. So that was a pretty cool moment though. So I'll have that, I'll have that in my man cave at some point. <laughs> and speaking of very cool moments, like last year, obviously with the Mexico game. So can you tell us how special was that for yourself and yes. for the whole team in general? That was, it was my favorite game I think I've played in my career. Um, just the atmosphere, like I've never been in anything like that. Um, it felt like I was at a soccer game, just like the chanting from start to finish. The stadium was full when I went out there for warm-ups. Like there's just, you don't see that very often. And so being in that atmosphere was so cool. I, it was the, the national anthem was one of the coolest moments of my life because you, I couldn't hear the woman that was singing because the crowd was singing the song, was singing it so loud. And I was like, this is crazy because you've never, I've never experienced that before. And then just like every time, it was just, I felt like also too, it was like 95% Niners fans. So we got a free home game. That was awesome. So um, that, it just, the energy in there was unmatched and I've never felt anything like I can't wait to go back. <laughs> now that, speaking of that, now that you see how how, how the Hispanic fans approach uh, the game, and you got the experience here in Mexico with, with the Mexico fans, how is that to you? Because, I mean, were you aware of this fandom and how passionate the people who speak Spanish were about the game? No, I'm not lying. When I got off the bus to go to the hotel, there's a huge crowd outside, and we were walking off, and it felt like, like they were just screaming. like. I swear like girls saw people and they were like fainting. Like it was like the it was like the Beatles just walked off. I'd never been I've never been in an experience like that. It was it was crazy. Like crowds were like trying to fight through security to go get close to the players and I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> this is so cool. I just absolutely love it. And so like I said, I would love to go back there because it was just such a unique atmosphere and I'm very jealous of it. But no, like don't get me wrong, love the faithful, Levi Stadium. It's fantastic. It's just a very unique experience. It's something I've never played in. But at the end of the day, they're all faithful, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, amen. <laughs> yeah, and you also got to uh, say hi to Cero Miedo. Oh, Pentagon. Yeah, no, that was awesome. I was, uh, I've got to work with him multiple times on a couple different things. Got to hang out with him a little bit, but uh, he gave me like, a custom mask down there on the sideline. It was phenomenal. Actually, that might have been one of my favorite things, just being able to see all the Lucha masks in the stands, because I wore one into the game, too. Uh, he just had to like, set the tone and get in that right uh, state of mind. So yeah, being able to see him was pretty special as well. He, yeah, he hung out with my uh, my wife and my mom too. It was pretty cool. How, how did that uh, passion for the 
for Lucha Libre started? Where did where you see it the first time and what, what called the attention to you? Because Lucha Libre is a lot different from wrestling. It's way different. And like, so I, I yeah, in, um, it was after the, my rookie season, um, the 49ers had a little deal with WWE and they let me and uh, one of our uh, old defense linemen, Earl Mitchell, he was a defensive tackle. Um, they let us go to WrestleMania down in um, New Orleans. And so we got down there like on a Tuesday, WrestleMania is on Sunday. So the whole lead up to that is just a bunch of like indie, like small wrestling groups. And um, Pentagon happened to be, he wrestled like at five different matches throughout the course of the week. And some of them were lucha matches and some of them weren't, but I watched him wrestle like five or six times. I was like, that guy's awesome. And then watching the lucha matches, just like the tempo of it and how fast it is and in and out of the ring, in and out of the ring. It's just so quick. I was like, this is, it's just so spectacular because it's just so different. And it just kind of made me fall in love with it. And then I got to meet uh, Pentagon the following year at the next WrestleMania. And so just being able to interact with him too has kind of made me love it a little bit more too. And now before we let you go, yes. we got to teach you a little bit of Spanish. So Vamos Niners. it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be that. That one you already also, know it. Nah, I do, I do, I do. You're but, prepared for that one, but no. But no, first no. it's going to be the people's tight end. You're going to say it in Spanish, okay? okay? The people's tight end. So, el ala. El ala. Cerrada. Cerrada. De la gente. De la gente. There you go. I'll give you one more. Say it one more time. El ala. El ala. Cerrada. Cerrada. De la gente. El ala cerrada de la gente. There, there you go. go. Perfect. Woo! And now, since we're in playoff time, now you're going to say like, post-temporada, that's playoffs. Post-temporada. Vamos Niners. Post-temporada. Vamos Niners. There you go. George Kittle, 49ers tight end. Ahí está, fieles. Muchísimas gracias por acompañarnos el, el día de hoy aquí con George Kittle, el ala cerrada de la gente en los 49ers. Nos vemos en la próxima. Vamos Niners.